and welcome back. Okay, so we are about to take on the witch hut and its terrible, nasty, scary occupants. So let's go through um, our lineup. So I gave Asa the falcon. Asa has impatience, so we can immediately use that. Also, Chloe has been moved um, one position to the right. I just want Asa on the flank. In case Asa gets charmed, because Asa cannot act before the witches being battleforged and all, apart from during the first round of combat. So on people um, like that on the flanks. Jon is also on the flank. Has a very nice resolve though, so if they do decide to charm him, then they will quite likely fail. But yeah, Jon doesn't have resilience, so the charm will last, sadly. But like I said, it's kind, kind of unlikely to happen. Hubert is now using Volram's old mace um, with the shield damage of 46. We are going to need that against the Hardwood Scrat, I think. Uh, Borkhild has been moved near to the center. No changes in the equipment there, though I did, yeah, I did give her the undead trophy to grant her a better chance of resisting the charm. Also doesn't have resilience, so it's a bit at risk there. Also, there are a few redback spiders, but the people who don't have resilient have immunity to poison through basilisk cloaks. So Yon and Orkild have those. Sami has the unhold splitter in his inventory. We'll be needing that probably against the hardwood scrot. We also gave Sami a throwing net, just one of them though. Oscar starts out with a throwing net, has quick hands, so can just switch to the preferred weapon when we so choose. Enhard has this Chieftain's Pummel, the Barbarian Mace with enhanced shield damage in his inventory, in case we need to use that against the Hardwood Scrat. Uh, might happen or might not, we'll see. Next up, Faruk has been moved one tile or one position to the left, kind of like Chloe here. And yeah, that's to just have Jon occupy this flank position. Jon also starts out with one throwing net. And Firi is starting out with this Curio pole, the pole arm. Doesn't have resilience, so it's a bit at risk. I considered giving him this reach mace, but the stun, which I would want to use, costs 30 fatigue to actually do, and it has only a 75% chance to hit, so eh, let's not. Let's instead start out with the curio pole and then possibly switch into the flurry at some point. Fulk is just going to start out with the reach axe. Being lithe, even with resilient, um, he is a bit at risk, so that's why he starts out with the Rich Axe and is in the back line. Sir Hilda is coming because we probably want to use the nets on her. A bit sad that she can't carry more of them because she never got back some belts. And I think we'll also bring Malobode. Purely because I don't think we have a better candidate to bring. But since we are bringing Malabode and since we are using nets, I think we'll wait for Dawn before we attack. <clears throat> that does give the witches um, their first round of combat um, to use their actual abilities instead of chucking the night owl elixirs, allowing them to see in the dark. So there's a bit of a downside there. But in order to actually have a vision to use these nets and in order to have Malabot be able to do stuff, I think we'll just attack during the daytime, well, during the dawn. So yeah, I think that about covers it. I was con contemplating bringing Herman, but Herman doesn't have resilient and while he would be pretty usable, um, he's also, his resolve is 62, so he might get charmed, and that would be very bad for us. 
So I decided to bring Malobod instead. If Malobod gets charmed, then that's like whatever, because he can't do anything. He's going to equip this wooden stick and just try to hit people with that, and that won't be a problem at all. So yeah, I could have also brought in Pierre here, who's probably good enough as a tank already, even though he can't keep spamming Indomitable as he is destined to do once he gets a rebound. But with this perk selection, with Resilient, with Colossus, with Freedom of Movement, with these nice shields, with Shield Expert, he'd probably be fine. Oh yeah, there is one thing at least I forgot to mention. I gave Farouk a maze, so that's so he can attempt to stun maybe a red back spider, maybe the white dire wolf, and I don't know if the skin ghouls can be cho can be um, stunned, but I would imagine that they can be, in which case more stuns the merrier, so to speak. Okay, so I think that covers it, so let's, let's wait for dawn and go in. So let's set up camp. Also gives us a chance to salvage some of our garbage loot to make room in our inventory. So it's been a while since I fought the witch hut. So I don't actually know if this is going to count as like, or what the terrain is going to be like. So is how many trees there, there are going to be. So there's a bit of an RNG element in all forest fights, but let's see how we get, or what kind of terrain we get here, how this is going to go. And our plan, at least for the first round and probably for the future rounds as well, since we have a lot of initiative-based characters, is to just act before the witches do, and then wait. If they get charmed, then thanks to Resilient and the initiative, that will just clear itself, and they can't actually harm us while being charmed, and essentially that will waste the charms of the witches. But yeah, this is going to be a very, very difficult fight probably, and people are quite likely going to die, but let's see how many. Oh, okay, so <clears throat> this preview image is telling us that this fight just counts as regular um, grass plains, apparently. I guess that's good for us, um, because that means Pathfinder, the lack of Pathfinder, rather, won't be an issue for us. So let's go in. Yep, okay. And good thing that these two skin ghouls that we see are only tier 1 skin ghouls. And as we can see, they don't have steel brow and they don't have composure. I think it's the perk that grants immunity to being stunned, so they should be stunnable. Okay, so we start out, I think, with the falcon. Though it would have been more impactful during the night and if this actually counted as forest terrain. So maybe we don't actually need the falcon. But what we do want to do is move at least a little bit. So in case Asa gets charmed, that won't bite us in the ass. So I think, yeah, let's use the falcon. Okay, so what do we have? We have four witches in total. One of them being a coven leader. We have two red back spiders. And three skin ghouls, all of them tier ones. So that's good for us. And yeah, one hardwood scrut, one rock unhold. Difficult fight, but should be doable. I think we'll start out by flanking here with Asa. And we will do the waiting trick in case she gets charmed. So yeah, let's do that and wait. And we want to move Chloe. Chloe is basically invincible thanks to this huge initiative. Thanks to freedom of movement and the helmet of the Ichirok for hit point healing. 
and also has resilient and has shields for over a hundred melee defense so yeah Chloe and Farouk will be very meaningful in this fight though not as not as good as in some other fights because we kind of need to just advance on these guys if I can call witches and beasts guys but yeah so let's just advance and wait we want to do the same thing with Enhard or at least for a little bit yes it is very funny Okay, so how far do we want to advance? So I think the skin ghouls actually have a reach attack. It's been a while since I fought one. They're incredibly rare to see out wandering around in the world. And they're also quite bad for uh, Nimble because I think they inflict bleed. So we don't necessarily want to go too far already, but let's move here and wait. And Sami um, also kind of need to be a little bit careful with him. Doesn't have underdog, doesn't have back to basics. Does have a good amount of hit points and freedom of movement though. So I think we'll move up to like here and wait. So we, could, we could probably should actually move further just in case we get charmed and that means that Sami is actually going to head back towards our fighting line which kind of wastes him need to get close to the witches ASAP just need to be careful while doing it so I think we'll move to this spot and also because Sami has the fencing sword he can possibly reposition using the launch ability during this fight let's move here and wait also want to move with Firi though Firi doesn't have resilient does have like some resolve to resist so <clears throat> the reason I brought Firi is just we didn't really have many other candidates to bring it's not like having a guy using a pike is going to be that impactful in this fight but since Walram died that's basically the case what we are going to do could have brought Pierre the tank which in hindsight maybe I should have but yeah <clears throat> so if I move Firi closer it, there's a good chance that they'll go for the charm on him and since we don't have resilient that's going to be quite Bad, but we can tolerate it so let's move and wait yes whatever you say whatever you say okay so <clears throat> Sir Hilda has Pathfinder yeah let's take this position and wait I could have saved that for actually Molobold but eh okay so if I don't move Molobold and he gets charmed he can actually fire the handgun, can't he? Can this be fired in melee? No. Okay, so we can wait with Malabot. Right. Did I lower the combat speed? I don't think I did. Let's lower it all the way down to one. Okay, so immediately the white direwolf is coming in and is going for Asa. That's quite bad. Um, Asa will eventually perish to a white direwolf. Also, Redback Spider is going for Fury, <laughs> so, and Fury is going to die to poison if he gets poisoned. So already I've kind of screwed this up. But what we can do with Hubert is go for a stun on one of these. I think it's probably going to be the Redback Spider. We can't even reach the white direwolf just yet. So the rock unhold is probably going to come in so yeah this fight is extremely difficult but yeah let's move hubert there and wait and i do believe i want to move oscar as well let's move over here i think
Okay, Sammy has also been interrupted. Or intercepted, I should say, by a redback spider. Okay, one charm successful, but we waited. Fury resists. Fury resists again. Would be nice to know what the actual percentage chances there were. Okay, so the Coven leader, I think, didn't go for the charm yet. How many charms did they go for? One, two, three at least. Okay, well, we'll find out in a second. I think the Coven leader didn't do anything yet. So, Fulok has resilient. Let's just move. We mainly want to use Fulk to break the shield of the Heartwood Scrat, but ideally we leave the Heartwood Scrat and the Rock Unhold um, to the last of this fight, because they're just that tanky and they will take quite a while to kill, especially the Heartwood Scrat. But yeah, we'll see. One thing we could have done and maybe should have done is just have our tanks move forward like we did in well we didn't do exactly that in the hardwood scrat contract and the rock unhold contract but allow them to lure quite a few of these enemies and then just back off with others but yeah i don't know if that would have worked actually because the reach or the range rather of the witch's charm ability is just so large Yes, Fulk, yes. Okay. So let's move Fulk here. Okay. So the majority of the beasts have already attacked us or gone into the melee. So having like a good sniper here would help a lot, but we don't have one sadly. Alright, I think Farouk, since the way this is... Well, let's actually wait with Farouk before we move. We might want to use Farouk against the Rock Unhold instead of going for the Skin Ghouls with the Stun. Okay, well, Fury has been charmed. And also the Heartwood Scrat has joined the fight there. So Fury will attack us during next round. And since he's equipped with a pike, might actually hit someone. We shall see. The hardwood scrot being here is pretty bad. So I think Fear is going to die at some point because we have to deal with the red black spider and we also have to deal with the hardwood scrot. Also, Fulk is a little bit in danger, as is Asa. But let's see what the rock unhold does. Okay, rock unhold. Goes for Sami, who is now staggered, but it won't matter because of resilient and waiting. We can just clear that. So it seems that the hexes are left without bodyguards. Well, apart from this one frenzied direwolf. Which is, I suppose... Well, in theory it could be good for us, but we can't currently reach them at all, and we kind of need to take them out ASAP. But yeah, this is a clusterfuck already. So what do we do with Borkhild? Borkhild has an axe, so we could start breaking the Hardwood Scratch shield, but <clears throat> ideally we just kill everything else before we do that. So maybe we just accept what is happening and let Fury get killed. Possibly. Someone needs to reach the hexes. And Sami is kind of in trouble here, being surrounded by these enemies. As we kill the dire wolves and the easier to kill enemies, <clears throat> we can lower the resolve of the rest though. So that's going to help, eventually. I don't think we bother trying to break the shield of the Heartwood Scrat already. We should just go for kills first. 
Using Borkhild against the Rock Unhold is a bit problematic because Borkhild can be thrown around. Sami cannot. So I could actually send Farouk out for a flanking mission. That's a bit of a shame though, since he can't deal much damage. I built him as a tank mainly, but we could do that. The other use for Farouk would be to try to stun these skin ghouls. They have 240 hit points and they're nimble. Also a Malabot. I guess we'll just use Malabot somewhere here to shoot at these enemies. But yeah, I don't want to use Borkhild against the Rock Unhold. I don't want to use her against the Heartwood Scrot. So yeah, this is very tricky. I could use him here. Or her, rather. I'm not sure what to do with Asa. Well, yeah. What ifs. So, yeah. It seems that people are going to die. This is just already kind of feeling like that. So I guess we use Borkhild here. We don't need to wait anymore. Um, this hex is waiting and this one is waiting, but they already used their abilities, so they don't actually have... Well, we can actually see four action points and four action points, so they can't go for the charm anymore. So I guess we go for the skin ghouls first. Let's use Jon's net already. Just go in, I think. So like I said earlier, thanks to the resolve, we don't... I don't think we need to worry about getting charmed on Yon, even without resilient. And having to act after the hexes. So... Also, we could use the whip. We have the whip. So we could go for the, some bleed damage here. Instead of going in melee already. I think we'll do that. They don't have armor. So, 95 to hit. Inflict two bleeds. Okay. So I wonder what we'll do with Chloe. We could actually, next round, do a disrespect move and try to move out of this position. And go for a hex, maybe. Um, that might be a bit unlikely to succeed, but if anyone can do it, it's Chloe. The other option would be to just move here, so that the White Direwolf has an additional target to attack. But I guess we don't need to worry about that just yet. Okay, Sir Hilda is going to have to use nets. Let's use one on the skin, other skin ghoul here. Also, this trapped in web condition is quite bad for us. Because Sami is going to act later than usual, thanks to the minus initiative coming from that condition. But yeah. So, this line of attack with Malobot might be okay. With the gun, we can't really go for the snipes, so maybe I should have brought the crossbow instead. So, if we go for this line, we're going to hit Sami. If we move here, there's the chance that this frenzied direwolf gets to him. So, I guess we'll go for this shot and we'll move Farouk here. Okay, well, good. We inflict some baffles. On the red back spider, that's actually going to be semi-helpful for us. Right, thank you, Resilient. So I think the white direwolf is going to be perhaps the most, or the biggest issue here, because Asaf can't handle that for long. Can handle it for a while. 
with 59 melee defense and a good armor. And we might get pretty lucky and land a stun with the flail. But we can't actually get a mace user next to the white direwolf. Normally how you deal with white direwolves, or at least how I deal with them, is just keep them stun locked for the whole duration of the fight. And when we can't do that, then they will they will land hits eventually. And they do deal quite immense damage as well. Not as much as some other legendary beasts, but still. And I think they attack like at least three times per turn, maybe even four. I can never remember exactly how many times. Anywho, what we'll do with Farouk, or what we could do is help out Sami here. Um, that's an okay plan, because Sami needs help to get through the nets, or the web rather. Or we could go for the flanking mission and protect Malobod at the same time. So a couple of options there. If we use him here, then he's basically locked in position for the whole duration of the fight, because he can't really... Or he probably can't move past the rock unhold. He currently does have 80 melee defense, but um, that's relying partly on dodge. So I don't know. I guess we'll check Sami's... Well, the initiative is very poor right now because we are also staggered in addition to being trapped in a web. We need to clear this condition. So he can do it himself eventually. Uh, but yeah, he's a bit vulnerable at the moment, so we might need help there. Wondering what will happen with this frenzied direwolf though, so it's going to go for the flank on Malobod. We can kill it pretty fast with Enhard though. That just means Malobod might miss next round completely if we do so. Um, it is baffled though, that's minus initiative. What is Malobod's initiative? Okay, it's pretty, pretty good. So, okay. I think we can go help out Sami here. The flanking mission also has a lot of merit, because we could go for the hexes, perhaps. We could just leave this direwolf be at some point and move here instead. But I don't currently, I don't think I have anyone who's capable of helping Sami out here, and Sami might need the help. And I really want Sami to survive. But the major issue here is that we can't really get to the hexes with anyone. So, did we only bring 13 people? No, we didn't. Because, yeah, okay, Fury is still, still charmed. Okay, so, yeah. I could spend a lot more time thinking about what to do here exactly with Farouk. But I think we'll help out Sami, because I really want Sami, Sami to survive. And when he's up against a skin ghoul, a redback spider, and a rock unhold all by himself, until Borkhild can join the fight, I think he needs help. So let's move here. And pull a disrespect, I think. We could also just throw some dirt on the skin ghoul, but let's not. Okay, we fail. We failed to move. What was the chance there? 26. Okay, and since they have like a multi-attack, um, that also hit Borkhild's head armor, which will fix itself though, because we have the rock unhold layer equipped there. But yeah, it seems we shouldn't try to move there unless we activate shield wall first. And we could inspire Borkhild for next round. The issue with that is if he gets, if she gets charmed, but she does have the undead trophy. We could also inspire Yon for additional uses of the whip, or we could 
help out against the frenzy direwolf with yawn instead. But let's inspire Borghild. She's going to deal good damage to the skin ghouls. At least, like I said, if she doesn't get charmed. And now that we see, let's check what is Sami's actual initiative. 90. Okay. So this is only minus 50% initiative, but it does mess with it further than that. Because it also messes with perfect fit, etc, etc. Um, so actually checking the right person there. No, it doesn't mess with perfect fit. Okay, but Sami usually has over 200 initiative and this says minus 50%, so it's actually more than 50%. So now Chloe has a turn and we need to carefully consider what to do here. This regular unhold is going to come in as well. It's not that big of a threat though. So we could try for the disrespect move and go for a hex already, but Chloe can't really deal damage anyway, so maybe that's a waste. It would really help if Chloe had Taunt available. So we could guarantee that the red back or the white direwolf attacks her instead of someone who's more vulnerable. So I don't know what to do with Chloe. 69 Resolve is semi nice, but maybe we should actually spend her action points instead of leaving them. I don't know. I think we should maybe just wait. Wait and reevaluate the situation in a moment. That does mean that she might get charmed, but with while equipped with just a spear and 60 melee skill, that's not like that. That big of a threat to Hubert. I think we'll just wait. Don't believe we need to activate shield wall against the skin ghoul or the red back spider. And also if the red back spider goes for the webbing on Hubert, we will have the action points to free up Hubert maybe. We might be able to stun the red back which we will attempt with Hubert, because the other option would be to stun Fury or to break the shield of the Hardwood Scrot. So yeah, let's wait here. And double check if these things can be stunned. It seems they can, so just go for the stun. No, they cannot be stunned. That was a daze. How do they have stun immunity? It didn't say they have stun immunity and also they don't have steel brow. Well, the daze does help us, but yeah, that's false advertisement. Oh, never mind. I used the cudgel attack. I used the cudgel attack. Okay. Well, I'm already screwing this up big time. Well, I guess that deals good damage at least. And since it's a tier one, Maybe that's actually the better option instead of going for the strike down. But yeah, mistakes have been made. So now we get to see if Fury can hit someone with the pike. I would imagine he goes for Asger. And we'll have a good chance to hit actually. Uh, we saw what happened to Farouk, so maybe we shouldn't try to move here. To stop the frenzied direwolf from advancing. So let's just wait. Okay. Went for Fulk, switched weapons. And the, and the charm is still persisting. So yeah, that's the problem with bringing in people who don't have resilient into these fights. That is the problem. Sami really needs to get free from this web. If I move Ser Hilda in, 
she will be at risk because the rock on hold will be able to land hits and can also throw her. <clears throat> Problematic. We could just use nets now. But yeah, Firi is going to be a problem for us as well, so maybe we need to use a net on Firi. So that he can't launch at Asgar or something like that. So the argument for moving Ser Hilda here would be that we can actually break Sami free from the web. Thanks to having these um, net perks. Gain a baseline 99% chance to succeed in removing rooting effects. And I don't really mind that much if Ser Hilda dies, so I think we'll just go for it. Even though this is a very risky move for her. But we'd rather keep Sami alive. So do that and do that. And wait. And here we will go, to go for the strike down. On the red pack we have 81 to hit. There we go. And they don't have action they don't actually have resilience, so that's actually going to last for the whole two turns as it should. That helps us quite a bit. And soon we will see how much damage the white direwolf can do against us. Can't throw a net on it. I will throw a net on the red back, I think, instead of on Fury. That means we, we will have the 95 to hit. Hit the stun on Hubert on it. Consistently. Hmm. So we might need one on Fury as well. Nah, I'll use it on the red back. And let's see what the White Darwolf can do. So yeah, they do have... Fast Adaptation. And this is annoying. This Frenzied Direwolf was able to act one turn before Malabod, so that means Malabod's turn is quite likely wasted. That's partly my own bad though. Instead of just, like, bad luck or something. So yeah, the White Direwolf, even if it's unable to actually land hits as often, it will overwhelm times four, which means Asa can't actually do much either. And since Fulk is positioned like he is, we might just go for the Hardwood Scrot here with the Split Shield attack. The other option would be to just go for damage on the red back. Which isn't actually a bad idea because eventually... Well, it's going to take a while with the way we are positioned. But that might open up a lane to get Hubert for the fight Direwolf. Then again, that's going to be very difficult with the Hardwood Scrot being positioned right next to Hubert. Okay, I've convinced myself. We'll go for the Hardwood Scrot already. We need to spend Fulk's action points so that if he gets charmed, he can't actually attack us. So yeah, let's go for the Hardwood Scrot here. Okay, we'll wait with Malabod. I think we need Yon. Yon and Enhard. To help out here, kill these direwolves, so the Malabod can once again do things. Okay, went for Chloe. Resisted. Redback went for <laughs> Malabod, that means Malabod is quite likely dead. Unless we can go... Go get the stun on it with Enhard, but that's going to be that's going to be extremely difficult because Enhard is currently surrounded by three enemies. 
Anyway, let's go for the stun on this skin ghoul with Farouk. There we go. And we'll wait and go for another stun after this thing has cleared because it's only a one turn stun. So maybe we shouldn't wait because Farouk might get charmed. Then again, Farouk has 120 resolve. Let's wait. Okay. They keep going for Chloe and eventually they succeeded. So Chloe now has the action points to do things. Uh, we need to throw Sami's net so that he can actually deal more damage. But I think we'll wait for the rock unhold to do its thing first because it's probably going to break free. And at that point we can use Sami's net on it. Hardwood Scrot attacking in that line. Not the worst thing for us. But yeah, I, I foresee Malobot dying here. The red pack is going to just annihilate him. Enhart's charm will clear. And also the skin ghoul can actually attack Malobot. Unless I stun it or kill it. This unhold actually has a clear line of attack on Halvor. Halvor does have footwork to help out with that though. Hubert has been hit by the hardwood scrot, so he might be in trouble. He's also next to a charmed fury. So the one good thing that happened there is that the hardwood scrot attacked in this line, damaging its ally, the skin ghoul. Right, so we will inspire Yon, I think, again. Then again, Yon doesn't have that much fatigue left. Let's wait. Okay. Sami has been staggered again. 67 to hit with Asa. That's basically the only thing we can do with her. We can't really attempt to move. Well, we could attempt it, I guess. We could attempt it. We do have quick step as well, so we might just be able to get to a hex, maybe. But I foresee the white direwolf just following us in that case, if we are even successful. And if it doesn't follow us, then it's going to go for Fulk, and Fulk is just going to perish basically almost immediately. So yeah, that's problematic. I think we'll just go for the 67 here. And if we get extremely lucky, we will also land the stun. That's quite unlikely to happen though. We also have Vengeance active, so it's going to deal good damage if we connect. Oh, well that helps. We did get extremely lucky. We did land the hit and we did land the stun. So we can now start moving Asa against a Hex. If we so choose, I think we probably should. Even if that means that Fulk is going to perish to the White Direwolf as it goes for him. But yeah, I think that's the best course of action we can go for. We'd also go for the Skin Ghoul, but let's not. Let's just move there. Okay, Borg killed. You have a 95 to hit this one. It has been damaged already. Uh, we could also just go for this one, but let's go for this one. We can try to keep this one stun locked. We have two mazes next to it. Good. And good. So we need like one more hit on this one. Alright, I think Yon... Hmm. We could go for the kill here. With the whip, is that actually going to kill? Not on one hit, I don't think, since it has nimble. Let's just go for the frenzy direwolf here. That frees up a line of attack against the red back spider as well. We need to kill these enemies on this flank ASAP to have any chance of saving Malobot. 
it's not the end of the world if Malopo dies, but we pre- we would prefer no one dying, of course, because them dying will make this fight even more difficult. So let's switch weapons and go for the Frenzied Direwolf here. We'd actually wait and use another attack from an Inspire. Or we could just Inspire Borkhild again. I think I'll wait. Okay, thank you Resilient again. Okay, Oscar needs to get a weapon out. It's kind of locked in with the Heartwood Scrat, so we start breaking its shield, even though that's not the best use of Oscar's abilities, but that's just how this fight played itself, or how I positioned my guys. Okay, so yeah, what I could do is just switch into the wooden stick and try to stun the red back. I guess we should do that. Never should have positioned Malabot like this. But I did, and this is the result. Okay. Having quick hands would help again. We have a 25 to hit the stun, and it's a 75 to stun if we do hit. We miss. Okay. Alright. Go for another stun on the skin ghoul, I think. We do land the hit, but we don't land the stun. Where are you going? Oh, you're running from Asa. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, Chloe has turned back. So yeah, like I said, let's inspire Yon here. Now Sami uses the net on the rock unhold, and we start killing actually the... Hmm, 150 with Nimble. So the Skin Ghoul is the bigger threat, but we kind of need to open up a line of attack here. We can't really move with Sami, unless one of these hexes stupidly moves into a position like this. So if we kill this Frenzied Direwolf, we actually have a launch opportunity against this one. And also... It's going to take less time to kill this one. So let's do that and let's do that. Alright. So this Frenzied Direwolf is going to bleed out, but it's first going to be able to attack Malabot and yeah. Malabot being surrounded by two Frenzied Direwolves and a red back spider means that yeah, he is going to die. Most likely scenario. Alright, so now we could go for a disrespect move. The Redback Spider is stunned. We could try to edge, edge, edge closer to the hexes here with Chloe. I think we want to wait before we do that, but we could move here first. Let's see if we are able to do so. We are able to do so. 23 to hit for the Skin Ghoul against about 100 melee defense. So I think now we'll wait with Chloe instead of immediately moving. I don't want this skin ghoul attacking Hubert just yet. We could in theory stun it, but we kind of need to keep stunning the red back as well. So I'll wait. And like last round, it's not that bad if if they decide to go for the charm on charms on Chloe, even if she does eventually get charmed. That kind of wastes their turn doing that if they so choose to do. So who's going to kill the skin ghoul? It might have to be Enhard. That's a bit of a shame. Can't activate Berserk because Enhard doesn't have Berserk. Orkhild acts after the Skin Ghoul. We really need it to die before it can attack. Probably. The other option would be to go for this Frenzied Direwolf. I think we just go for the Skin Ghoul here. 
94 to hit with the cudgel or 95 to hit with the thrust so I guess we'll go for the one percentage more of a chance to kill yeah I can't get to the skin ghoul with anyone else I don't think yeah okay let's kill it Keep doing that. Nearly, nearly killed the frenzied Darwolf. Okay, good. Got a bit lucky there, or actually quite lucky. I was afraid of that, and it did happen. So, yeah. Went for a couple of lunges. We are extremely lucky that both of them missed. Is still charmed, is infatuated. I think that's because... Um, the charm came from the Hex Coven leader. So yeah, an immense risk bringing people who don't have resilient into these fights. Fury is actually a big problem for us. We might need to go for a stun on Fury. But yeah, we got lucky there. Now here what we could do is actually use a net on this regular unhold so that it can't go for Halver immediately. If it does go for Halver, Halver is going to get stunned, which means no Inspire as well. We could also go for a net on the Redback Spider. This is our final net. At least until we can pick up this one. If, if this net came from... Sir Hilda, I don't remember anymore. The rock unhold is also going to break free at some point, so having more nets would be helpful, but alas, it is what it is. I think we'll go for the regular unhold here. Also means we can go for the stun with Sir Hilda instead and use Farouk for something else, perhaps. Perhaps even intercept the regular unhold there. Or help out on the southern flank. Okay, apply the stun. <clears throat> so let's see. 63 to land a stun on Fury. We kind of do want to spend Hubert's action points so that if he gets charmed he can't actually attack us. The red pack is going to get stay charmed rather. No, not stay charmed. Stay stunned. For this turn. After which it will clear. But stunning Fury might be the right move here. It's only 63 to hit though. I think we'll go for it. Okay, Fury has been stunned. And since he is not a resilient, that will last as well as the charm. Good. I don't think we want to risk moving with Oscar. Also, he can be thrown around by the unhold, so... Not that much of a point in doing so. I think we just start breaking the shield. Okay, Malabot is about to die. Now we can reposition Fulk since Fury is stunned. We might want to do that. Also means that the white direwolf can't immediately go for him and kill him if we do so. So we could move like here. Keep breaking the Heartwood Scrot's shield. The problem with Fulk is that he's quite flimsy. 50 melee defense is okay, but we've seen in past fights that he can't actually take many hits being light. So I think we need to like reposition here. I think we'll do it. Move here and use the action points. OK, 
Okay. Malabot has a chance to save himself if he lands this stun. It's only 11% though, but what else could we do? Basically nothing. We do miss. We do apply Overwhelm though. I think we'll go for the Bash to apply another Overwhelm. Okay, well. He's quite likely going to die now. If he gets poisoned by red back poison, he's just dead. Doesn't have a resilient. Okay, so Malabor is going to die. Well, we anticipated losses in this fight. If it's only Malabot who perishes, then that's not too bad. So what do we do with Farouk? I think we move here. Enhart should be able to handle this with the help of Yon and eventually with Borkhild and Sami. We can stun the red back. The main problem actually from Malabo dying is that it will grant confidence to our enemies. We kind of need to stop this regular unhold from advancing. What we could also do is help out here and maybe kill the frenzied direwolf opening up a lunge for Sami, but I don't want the unhold to reach Halber. So what we will do is go for this position here, I think. It's a bit of a waste of Farouk, but don't see a better option. We could throw dirt on the rock unhold, but let's instead just activate Indom. Okay, Chloe is hit, but it doesn't really matter because she's just going to regenerate health thanks to the thanks to the Ichirok helmet. Okay, so soon enough we will have cleared this southern flank, which will open up a line of attack on the hexes. After which we can deal with the rest of these enemies. And hopefully our only casualty will be Malabot. Maybe I shouldn't have actually waited with Malabot because that Redback's poison is is going to tick since we waited. It's 20 hit points. So he's going to die next turn. Could have also brought some antidotes into this fight, but I forgot all about it. Just having Resilient instead is so much more useful. But yeah, I'd rather have Malabo die than um, Herman, who I could have also brought. Herman would have been more useful in general, but if he had died, then that would have been far more of a casualty. Far more of a big deal. Anywho, I think we inspire Borkhild here for two axe swings again. Get rid of the skin ghoul eventually. Okay, Hubert continues to be hit by the hardwood scrot, which means that he will eventually perish as well. Needs to keep stunning the red back. Also, there's a chance that the white direwolf goes for Hubert instead of Fulk and Oscar. Having more. People with mazes would definitely help, but Volram died and it is what it is. Anyway, let's keep killing the skin ghoul. Could actually go for the skin ghoul here as well with Asa. We can get the kill on it relatively fast since it's already damaged. damaged due to the Heartwood Scrot hitting it so much. And it's going to take a while to reach the Hex. I think we'll go for the Skin Ghoul. Thanks to Quickstep, we can actually do it. 
Okay. Good. Rock Unhold keeps hitting Sami, which is kind of annoying. But soon enough, we can actually have Farouk handle the tanking. Sir Hilda has been knocked back, which is actually probably probably good for us. And Sami can launch away from this position as soon as this dire wolf is dead. Anywho, I think Yon just goes, goes for the frenzied dire wolf here. I could also go for this spot. But I can get an attack in if I move in already, so let's do that. Okay. Well, Chloe is out of fatigue. We can't actually do the thing we were planning on, which is move. Thank you, Resilient. Okay. Oh, thank you. So I kind of foresaw them being this stupid. They not actually realize that Sami can launch. So we can actually get the Coven leader with Sami, hopefully, next round. Helps quite a bit. Right. I think now that Asa is next to the skin ghoul, we'll probably just move on the hex. One thing we could consider, but I think it's a bad plan, is just going for the white dire wolf, even though we've already moved away from a position like that. It would be nice to be able to lock the white dire wolf in place, but we actually can't do that because they have footwork. So let's instead rattle the hexes, I think. Though Sami can already go for them, so maybe that's not necessary. We can go for two thrusts as well on the skin ghoul, leaving us free to do something else. If we land both hits, is it going to kill? Maybe, I don't know. I don't actually know if it's, that's going to kill. Um, Having us free to do something else would help a lot, though. So let's go for it. Okay, we missed. We missed twice. Well, there's a chance, since we stayed in this position, that the skin ghoul will attack Chloe instead of Asa, which would be nice. Don't know if that's going to happen, but hopefully it is. Anywho, the best plan of the or the best best course of action here is to go for the stun on the red back. It's only a 69 to hit. Don't have any more nets available. Um, but I think it's still the best thing we could do here. And we missed. Okay. Well, Enhard is resilient and Yon is immune to poison, so it's not that bad. Uh, we could act activate Berserk by killing the Frenzied Direwolf here, before we launch the Coven Leader. Is there a point? It's a little bit of a point. All the kills we get will lower the resolve of the rest of them. It's the same amount of action points left to attack the Coven Leader anyway, unless we miss. But it's a 95 to hit. Let's go for the Frenzied Direwolf first. Well, we did miss the 95. That's a shame. So 
So now, I don't know if this is going to be enough to kill the Coven Leader with one hit. Well, it was. So, a bit unlucky there, but we did get the Coven Leader anyway. Lunch just deals so much damage coming from Sami. Okay. Good. The White Direwolf decided to help out the Hexes and act as a bodyguard, which means it can't attack anyone while doing so. Actually immensely helpful for us. Okay, Skin Ghoul acts in 14, Borkil acts in 18. We have enough fatigue for one stun attempt. It is a 95. I think we should just go for the knockout here, even though the Skin Ghoul is going to die pretty soon. Maybe even to one hit from Borkhild. So that it just can't attack us. And if this is a net from Ser Hilda, can't remember if it is. If it dies while the net is applied, or while it's trapped in the net, that means we can pick it up. So let's go for the knockout there. And we go for the stun on the red back here. Don't miss the 93. Good. Also, Fury has been turned back since we killed the Coven Leader. But the stun is still going to last. And we keep breaking the shield with Oscar. Okay. There goes Malobode. They're going for Fulk now. Which was quite smart of them since Fulk hadn't actually acted during this round. But Fulk did resist with his 75 resolve. And yeah, since Malabot died, these three are now confident. Redback Spider included. That's quite bad. Anywho, I think we just keep on splitting the shield of the Heartwood Scrot. Not much else we can do. We could go for damage on the regular Unhold, I suppose. But the two Unholds are going to be tied down. With Faruk being able to spam Indom indefinitely. So we don't need to go for that. And we will need help for Hubert. If we want Hubert to survive. So let's keep breaking that shield. Though there is the problem that once we do break the shield. If we don't surround the Heartwood Scrot. It's going to spawn those damn saplings all over the place. And we can't really surround it. Well, that's a problem for future Bozo. Okay, good. Red back missed its attack. This bosom lady wasted her charm on, charm on Chloe, who can't actually do anything. And the charm is just going to clear immediately. Just keep spamming Indom with Faruk. Faruk's armor is eventually going to break, but that won't matter because... <clears throat> because of the Indom and because of the health regeneration. I think we inspire Borkhild again. Should have enough fatigue to attack twice. Right. We also have Battle Flow to help out in case we land the kill on the first hit. An attack costs 12. So yeah, we have enough. Let's inspire Borkhild. Okay, what? Did that actually deal no damage? Well, Fury is maybe going to die, but I don't really care. As long as Hubert survives. 
but did the skin ghouls attack actually deal no damage? Um, let's see. Mrs. Hubert. Mrs. Hubert. Mrs. Hubert. Well, it seems that the skin ghoul missed, but the sound effect and the animation implied that it was a hit. So I don't know. Whatever. Let's kill the skin ghoul. Okay, we do need to hit it twice. I could just let it flee, but let's just kill it. And I think now we go for either the red back or the hardwood scrot. Probably help out here since Enhard needs to be broken free as well. And it's going to take a bit of time to actually get to the hardwood scrot. Having Borghild's axe there to help out would be nice, but we can't do everything. Could in theory also go for the hexes, but I'd rather do that with Sami, who has the launch ability and is also already close by. So let's just help out on the southern flank. Okay, all the skin ghouls have been dealt with. I think now we let Chloe handle the white direwolf if possible. So the question becomes... Do we go for the red back spider with Asa or perhaps one of the hexes? The problem with going for a hex is that the white direwolf is quite likely going to act as a bodyguard and even if we get Chloe next to it, it will just footwork its way out of it and go for Asa, who at that point will be quite far from the rest of the team, is going to be separated and is going to perish, cannot kill a white direwolf on her own. So I think we just go back for the red back spider here. And after that's dealt with, we can start pummeling the hardwood scrot. So, yeah, using the quick step ability, we actually have enough fatigue to go for a pound as well. Let's do that. Deal some damage. Deal some damage. Yes, keep doing that. That's fine. Chloe's charm has worn off. Alright, what do we do with Sir Hilda? There's a net there. We can use it on the red back. Or perhaps on the hardwood scrot. Let's pick it up. There we go. Don't have fatigue to do anything else. Let's get next to Enhard though, since we want to break him free. <clears throat> Don't remember which band made that song. Where I think the chorus is something like, it's time to break free or something. Was it Queen? Well, whatever. Not like it matters. <laughs> okay, well, this hex being sufficiently rattled decided to... Retreat a little bit. Tactically reposition, which means Sami cannot launch at it. So next round with Sami. We either kill the sapling or we launch at the frenzied direwolf. I think it's probably better to go for the sapling so that we free up the line of attack against the hexes again. It's also possible, as their allies die, that the Hexes will actually flee. Which is... I'm going to allow that to happen. Don't necessarily get a choice in it anyway. But just getting through this fight with only one casualty is going to be a win in my book. Well, it's a win technically speaking as well, but... You know what I mean. Anyway, we want to use Chloe against the White Direwolf. I don't know if it matters. I don't think it matters if we are using shield wall or not, because even if it's able to land hits, which it might not be able to do very often, we will just regenerate hit points. And we do have freedom of movement, so we receive 80% less damage. So I don't think we need to use the shield wall. 
But instead we could go get next to this hex. Uh, which is probably a good idea. What we could also consider, though I don't think we want to do it, is head here so that there's one less spot for saplings to spawn. But I don't think that's a good plan at the moment. So we definitely want to get rid of well, get rid of the white direwolf, yes, but get next to it as well. And if we don't move, we won't have stamina to do anything. So either we move or we shield wall or we attack the white direwolf here. Mm, let's activate shield wall and then, then try to move. 5% chance, but like I said, they have fast adaptation. So it will eventually land, land its hits. And like I said, Spoke earlier, we will go for the sapling first before we go for the frenzied direwolves here because we want to get to get to the hexes. Okay, one, one shot, one kill. We can move and launch in that case. We could also move here, possibly launch to this position, which is far better than this one. But we can't really control which position Sami wants to take, but we can try it. So take this spot, please. Well, the good news is that the witch is dead. The bad news is that Sami was stupid and didn't do what I wanted him to do. Oh well. Okay. The white direwolf decided correctly that the correct decision or the biggest threat is going for or that Sami, not Sami, Asa is the biggest threat here. Well, actually Sami is the biggest threat, but Asa is big, a bigger threat than Chloe, so decided once again to go for Asa. Anyway, it does seem that we'll win this fight, but we shall see if it's only with one casualty. Firi is probably going to die to the hardwood scrot thanks to being staggered and stunned and not having resilient but as long as only fury and malabo die then that's not too bad anyway let's break enhard free enhard also acts before the red pack spider so let's use the net so we have a better chance to land the stun like so. I think we just wait with Hubert. Don't remember if this stun... Well, it was applied last turn. That means it is going to clear now. Instead of breaking the shield here, let's just wait. Apply the stun again. So one thing to consider there that is that the two hexes can still act, which means they might be able to charm Hubert, so that might have been a mistake. But we shall see. We shall see. Okay, Chloe has been charmed again. Whatever. Rather it be Chloe than anyone else, especially since Chloe has already spent all her action points and fatigue. Okay, yeah, they did go for Hubert, but thankfully Hubert resisted. If Hubert had been charmed there, then Fury would, would have died all the faster. All the quicker. Anywho... Let's go for a strike down on the red pack. It's still only 67, even though it's trapped in a net. That's quite... Si well, yeah, we've been overwhelmed. That's the issue here. But we did land it. So the red pack spiders are not a threat currently. Especially if we can land this stun on the northern flank as well. As well. Oh, 
Alright, who's acting Halvor? It might be time to move with Halvor, though we can inspire Asker or Fulk from this position. Don't want to inspire Ser Hilda. Doesn't have the fatigue to do anything. I think I'll just wait for now. We need to consider when to when when we actually start attacking the Hartwood Scrat because of the saplings that will spawn. There's currently three sp three spots for them to spawn into, which is going to be a problem. Um, we could start using Borghild or start moving Borghild north now. But let's not. Let's just kill the red back. The bleeds are going to help quite a bit, actually. Bleeding seven times already. Oh, the hexes already spent their action points. I could, I could have just ended the turns here instead of waiting. Well, it's not going to matter since they're battleforged. They would not have the initiative next round anyway to act before anything else does. Okay, so what do we do with Asa? We could attack the red pack or we could attack the white direwolf. We got lucky last time and landed the stun. That's very unlikely to happen again. I think we'll go for the white direwolf anyway. We do land a hit, but no stun. Okay, Fury has been hit. But I'd rather it be Fury than Hubert. Alright, now we go for the stun again. There we go. Alright, so hmm, we could get next to the Hardwood Scrut with Fulk. That means one less tile for saplings to spawn into. The bad thing is that we don't have quick hands. So if we change into this better axe, it's going to waste one round. Also, if Fulk starts to be targeted by the Hardwood Scrut, then he is at risk of dying. I don't know. Sapling spawning in these two spots is not the best thing, but it's not the worst thing. For now, Fulk can take some hits, and since we have broken the shield of the Hardwood Scrot, at this point we should be able to kill it. Not really fast, but in a moderate amount of time. So I think we will move next to the Scrot. If I get Fulk killed here as well, then oh well, too bad. It might happen, but if it does, then I will shed one tier exactly. Anywho, I think we'll inspire Asker for next round. We will start killing the Hardwood Scrut. We'll get two saplings out of it, but so be it. And we'll see how long Asa can actually handle tanking the White Direwolf. But as soon as we've killed the Hardwood Scrut, we can start focusing on the Direwolf itself, so... Quite possibly Asa will be able to handle it until then. If she can't, then, well, too bad. Okay, this hex has a hex active. So what we could do instead of staying here is start going for this one. Sami is going to handle this one anyway. So yeah, let's edge closer to this one. Move next to it with Sami, or next to her rather. Don't want to attack while the hex is active. 
And since this is this is a two-turn stun, we can start going for the frenzy direwolves here. Let's go for a cudgel. Okay. Could go for a stun as well with Sir Hilda. Why not? We are successful. So now I think we'll just go for the Hardwood Scrat that also spends Hubert's action points so that if they go for a charm on him, he cannot attack us. So let's go for the Cudgel on the Hardwood Scrat and spawn a sapling. Okay, Asa is hit, but only once. Okay, let's stagger the Hardwood Scrat. Deal some damage. I'm not going to switch weapons here. Let's just attack. Went for Fury again. Thankfully, Fury resisted. Uh, Fury might die regardless. Um, the good news he here is that if he had been charmed, he could not use lunge, which would deal more damage to us. But that's a moot point since he didn't get charmed, thankfully. Luckily and thankfully. Go for damage there. Wait. Okay, so the red pack is going to bleed out. Asa has a hex applied to her. I suppose we'll continue to go for the white direwolf here. Oh, we got lucky again. So we've both gotten unlucky and lucky in this fight. Don't know if it evens out exactly, but that is quite lucky be able to land that stun on the white direwolf there twice in one combat. And we don't need to wait, so let's just end turn. The red pack spider is going to bleed out, so let's go for the direwolves next. So I'll wait before we move, because we can move to the red pack spider spot instead. There you go. You could also not move there because there's a net there. Okay, no hex active anymore here, so let's kill that stupid ass witch. And now Sami is free to go for the red pack or the white direwolf or perhaps even the hardwood scrot. All right. Fury dodges two forty-threes, so even Fury might survive. Maybe we shall see. The Hardwood Scrot decided to not regrow its shield, which means it's going to die next turn. So yeah, we might get away with this with only one casualty. That's Probably better than expected, to be honest, especially since I didn't play that well. Kind of got Malabot killed by positioning him as I did. Should have foreseen it happening, but oh well. Let's continue inspiring Oscar. Now we will start using or killed north, I think, or rather moving her north. Could also just move with Yon instead of going for the direwolves here. Both options are fine. Eh. 
let's just go for the dire wolf. The direst of wolves. And we can stop this last hex from fleeing. I guess we will. Hmm. If I launch at the Heartwood Sapling and kill it, we will activate Berserk and we can launch at the Heartwood Scrot, probably. These Heartwood Saplings will also spawn a regular sapling. I would imagine that the spot it spawns to is not the same spot. So I think we'll go for that. Both of these enemies are stunned, so we don't need help there just yet. Okay, there we go. Nice. Just go for a cutshell, I think. One hex left. Not sure if that's enough range to go for a charm on Hubert. But I think we'll just kill the hardwood scrot here. Instead of waiting and reapplying the stun. I think that's the better course of action. We can also activate Berserk by doing that. Yeah, we can just start killing the red pack here. We don't need to keep stunning it, I think. So let's kill the Heartwood Scrot. Activate Berserk and go for the red pack. Good, good, good. We can do one knockout or one bash with Sir Hilda. Let's just do the damage. Okie dokie. Kill the hardwood sapling. Well, it's going to take two hits apparently. Okay. Hex is fleeing. Okay, well, that's bad. That's actually bad. Because, yeah, Asa is hexed. Well, we'll see. We'll see if Chloe manages to kill Asa there. That, I guess I should have foreseen that coming as well. <laughs> oh, well. Nothing I can do about it anymore. Uh, Fulk still doesn't have Berserk and maybe never will. Just go for the red back here. Uh, do you have action points? I don't see action points anymore in this. Not sure. Well, whatever. Losing Asa is going to hurt, but... It's not the end of the world if that... If that does happen. Hmm. Fury has Berserk. We could just go for the sapling here. So Hubert will act before the sapling next round. And is going to be able to one-shot it. I think we'll just go for the red pack. Stummy has been staggered, but it doesn't matter that much. Okay, Asa. There is the possibility that this is your last turn in this company, on this earth, in this world, in this plane of existence. Uh, which one do we go for? Guess we'll actually go for the red back here. Also land a stun there. Us are definitely getting lucky. So far. <laughs> we'll see how lucky she eventually gets. Farouk's armor has been nearly destroyed, but it doesn't matter one bit. If I had had action points with Chloe, we could have moved her out of that position, but we didn't. So we shall see. 
if this is the end of Asa. Okay. Hex didn't have... What? Now it's saying the Hex does have action points, but it didn't actually try to flee there. I guess it just waited. But how can it wait if it's fleeing? Oh well. Whatever. So we could keep inspiring Asker or we could move. Both options are acceptable. Let's just keep inspiring Oscar for now. And Borg killed. Don't want to get next to the rock unhold just yet because Borg killed can be thrown around. We could just equip the Reach Axe. And start. Well, let's actually do this. Do that. Get the Reach Axe out. Well, Asa is not hexed anymore, so... Good, good, good. Also, yeah, one more thing I could have done. Since Asa is resilient, that would have cleared the hex condition, right? I think so. So I could have just ended turn with Asa instead of waiting stupidly. Yeah, that's what I should have done. It didn't matter, but that's what I should have done. Because I think that would have cleared the Hex condition, which means Asa would have been completely safe. But yeah, either the Hexes don't actually try to flee as they're next to someone, or that was some sort of weird bug, I guess. <clears throat> Since it claimed that the Hex had 9 action points left, but didn't. Anywho, no one's Hexed now, so I guess we just continue. Well, we could just try to kill immediately, instead of moving there. Like, what's the point of that? So do that. Let's wait with Enhard. Hubert gets to act before the sapling, which means Berserk activation, if he scores the hit. Let's just launch this sapling, then launch at this one, and wait. Uh, we could just kill the sapling with Fury as well, perhaps. And let's just go for the red back. Wasa has been hit, but the armor is still holding. Kill, please. Good. Hmm. Okay. Four enemies remain. Uh, do we have more nets? We have one here. We could pick that up. I think we will. Don't think we want to use Sir Hilda's flimsy melee skills against a rock unhold or even a regular unhold. Just pick up the net instead. Right. Wait there. Wait there. Keep on indoming. Wait. Wait. Um, we might as well Wait as well, or hmm, I guess there's no point in waiting. The White Direwolf has Battle Heart anyway, so surrounding it is not going to accomplish anything. Nice hit, thanks to Vengeance. Wait. Not sure if I've ever actually heard that Hex fleeing screams or sounds. Well, there's a first time for everything, I suppose. Anywho, we'll kill the White Direwolf and the regular Unhold first, and then finally kill the Rock Unhold, which is the tankiest opponent remaining, and possibly the tankiest opponent in this fight in general. 
So we could already go for the rock on hold here. Which is fine. Enhart is also immune to being thrown around. So sure, let's actually go for it already. Okie dokie. that that it's inspire and heart is very nicely in inspire range there and slowly start chipping or chiseling away at this rock on holds armor to equip the reach cleaver Right. All the hexes have been dealt with. Three enemies remain. Make that two enemies remaining. Uh, we could move here and throw some dirt, but Fury has already taken quite a bit of damage, so perhaps not the brightest idea. 58 melee defense. I think I'd rather let Asa handle it. She should still be able to survive for a while. So let's see. Good, good. Okay, one hit. Armor is at almost 50% durability. But yeah, she is handling it. Uh, we might as well throw the net... But let's throw it after the rock unhold has acted, so it can't immediately break free. Hubert doesn't have quick step, so we can't get to the white dire wolf and attack it just yet. Hmm. Guess we'll just move in there anyway. Now let's wait. There's a chance that Asa can actually land that vengeance, and it might even be enough to kill. Maybe. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Just use Asker from this position, I guess. Keep on indoming. Technically, I should have maybe waited, but it doesn't matter anymore. Also getting staggered here with the Indom and the Ichirok armor. Definitely not that bad. Not as bad as it could be. Okay, we do land the hit. The White Direwolf is still alive. Barely. Right. The rock unhold was unable to do more than one attack. It was stamped out, I think. Thanks to being dazed. Uh, let's help out here with Sami. And also with Fury, I think. Okay, one more hit will do it. Do we even need the help? To hit the rock on hold. They have last stand, don't don't they? Well in that case I I think I'll wait on the net still. Let's use it once it's actually down some hit points as well. And with Hubert, I don't think we need more help with the white Darwolf. Hubert is immune to being thrown. Let's just get next to the rock on hold. Um, could maybe get the kill with Fulk as well. Though between Fury and Sami, I think they'll get the kill. So let's go for the Rock Unhold instead. Let's inspire Oscar. Alright. Well, we did miss twice. With Sami, so it's now it's up to Fury. 
Thanks to last stand, our chances to hit aren't that high. We have 86 to hit. We could also throw dirt, but... Eh, let's go for two 86s. One was enough. Good, good, good. And let's equip the pike. Just the rock on hold. Still standing. And that won't be the case for long. Uh, might as well inspire Yon. Doesn't matter that much anymore. Yeah, they do have last, last stand. Well, Sir Hilda could go in there, but the risk reward ratio is not good enough, even if the risk is quite small. With 61 hit points and relying on freedom of movement, getting staggered and then getting hit would be quite bad. Chloe can just sit out for the rest of this fight. Don't need help any longer. Just head there. Keep on pummeling. Okay, nearly there. Breaks free from the net, but whatever, we can hit it even without a net. 95. Okay, well, we missed that one, <laughs> okay. I guess I jinxed it. What about Sami, 87? Okay. Nice. Good. 85 miss. Eighty-five health remains. And there we go. Okay, so our only casualty was Malabot, who I got killed due to my own incompetence, I suppose. Sami gets a level up, dealt 2000 damage, also gets over a thousand XP out of that. Asa got only one kill, got a bit lucky in this fight, might have died if things had gone differently. Sir Hilda with zero kills and 66 damage dealt, but that's expected from a net master. Farouk actually did a lot for us, thanks to being able to spam Indom, being immortal. Chloe kind of the same deal. And Enhart and Hubert very useful as always. Jon dealt okay damage. Oscar dealt okay damage. Fury was charmed for a lot of the fight, but somehow survived. And also we got lucky when we, he was charmed that he was unable to land a launch on anyone. Fulk didn't do all that much, but I guess breaking the shield on the hardwood scrut was a valuable service. So yeah, everyone pulled their weight, I suppose. Malabo didn't get to do much, but that wasn't his fault. That was my fault. I take full responsibility for his demise. Anywho, we get a bunch of loot. Get some ghoul skins. 
So get some rock on her bones, some white wolf, well, one white wolf belt. Some red back poison glands, etc, etc. And now we need to do inventory management. Since our inventory is full. And since Malabo died, that means we will actually need to do even more of it. He's not around to carry any more things. Uh, let's get rid of the broken throwing nets. It's fine. And still need to throw stuff away. Let's keep doing that. But yeah, that's two out of three of our ultimate goals done now. Also, maybe I shouldn't be carrying around these poisoned apples because our gluttonous fools are, well, they continue or they keep eating them. Well, whatever. Uh, I guess we'll pick up that throwing net as well. So now we only have the Kraken left. We have killed every single type of legendary beast as well. Thanks to there being skin ghouls present in this very fight. But we haven't done all the legendary contracts for them. It's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to grind enough kills to unlock them if I want to do all of them. Especially the Nacho and Alp contracts. So we've done the Stallworm contract, we've done the Hardwood Scrot contract. And we've done the Rock Unhold contract, so that leaves Demon Alps, Redback Spiders, Skin Ghouls, and White Wolves, I think. All of which are, are kind of a pain to grind. So we shall see if I have the stamina for it. Anywho, let's see how many items we'll have to continue to ditch. The last three items, okay, good. So do that and oh, one item still, okay. Okay, one more item to throw away here. That can go. There we go. It is done and now we get, no, we didn't actually leave enough room in our inventory. So I think we get like a zombie generating dagger out of this. Not sure if that's going to be like thrown on the ground now and never be seen again. Not that we'd be using it anyway. Anywho, let's get through this flavor text here. The last of the witches is slain and you have their corpses mutilated for good measure. Ears, lips, noses, toes, all of them cut off. Their bags are emptied out, and the items crushed into powder and covered in dust. Fleshy bits or animal parts are dumped into a pile and promptly burned. As the fire rises, the hexen from the hut seemingly appears out of nowhere and takes you by the arm. Your men draw their swords, but you hold your hand up. You tell them to keep salting the earth, so to speak, and as you enter the hut, you take a look back to see a few of the men pissing on the embers of the fire. Inside the hut, you sit where you had before. On the table, you find something rolled up in a handkerchief and the witch pinches its corner and rolls it between the, her finger and thumb. She looks up and tips her chin forward and turns her hands, palms up. Okay, so we can ask a question here. Let's, let's ask, ask, what is Duff Ghoul? Shrugging and leaning back, the Hexen asks you to repeat the name Duff Ghoul. She shakes her head. I have heard nothing about this Duff Ghoul. A supposed god, you say? Well, he has not spoken to me. You stare at her and try to pry a hidden truth from her eyes, but she seems earnest in her response and you change the subject. Who are you? The witch smiles. An old hag in a forest hut. Everything else is hearsay. You stare at her long enough to see there's little fruit to bear in chasing this question further. Okay, 
Where the green skins human? The hexen cackles. I wish. Have you seen what orcs got between their legs? Wouldn't mind a ride on that. If I knew it wouldn't tear me in half and fork one end while wearing the other for a glove. Okay. You raise an eyebrow and nod, as though to say, of course. Who were the ancients? She taps the handkerchief and whatever is beneath wraps the table. She answers. The ancients were men before our time. Truly, truly before our time. Imagine a kingdom. Now imagine a kingdom that ruled kingdoms. An empire. That's correct. Now imagine an empire that ruled empires. Unfathomable power such as that leaves the world with great vengeance and will spend its dying days ruining those which have ruined it. You ask if the empire is dead. The witch smiles. I suspect not, but I do not truly know. Why did you call me the false king? For the first time there is a crack in the witch's facade. She purses her lips. When did I call you that? You point to the door and then to the table. You answer. I walked in here and you said I'd seek the truth that you know what the false king dreams of. The hexen taps the handkerchief rather mindlessly. She looks up. Then you have my apologies, Selsword. I remember no such thing. I am but a fragile and old woman. Older than I look. And I'm not being cheeky about that. You press her on the matter, but she only stonewalls you further. How do you know who I am? She stares at the wrapped item. I don't even know your name, Selsword. And I haven't the slightest inclination to begin to care. It's not a matter of who you are, but what you are. She turns her hands as though they were following a tune. The blood of the ancients resides within you. It resides within us all, but you in particular, well. Her nose crinkles as she snorts and she exhales and she exhales. She grins. I suppose there should be an ass there. And as she ex exhales, she grins madly. It is ever so there, and if I can smell it, then the whole world can smell it. What is it that I dream of? Oh dear, this is a lot of text. The Hexen leans forward, she puts her hands to her face, and you feel the leathery fingers press deep into your cheeks like a half dozen walnuts. They rub the corners of your eyes and tap your temples. All the while she is smiling, and then she pulls back. You go to the nobleman and the rich, and they pay you gold, and in return you risk life and limb, and you slaughter and murder and kill all that you can, and there you are, day after day, wondering if that's all you are good for, and afterward the highborn shut the door on you and your deeds, and you hear them inside having a grand time, music playing, women folk laughing, gestures joking, the festivities are riotous, and you are outside with a bag of gold in hand, and it's blood slaked received, and you go down to the pub and buy yourself a whore, and tip a coin to the minstrel for a song, and you can taste fine wine in even the cheapest of cellars, but there is no escape from that horrible feeling in the back of your head, that feeling you were born into fever, and all this violence and death is not a means to an end, but the end itself. It is what you are, and what you always will be. She pauses, sighs, continues. Selsort, the power of a lie, is only equaled, equaled by one's desire to believe in it. You live a powerful lie, and such power will not go easily. I beg of you, be only what you can understand. It was not yourself or your weaponry or the presence of your company hall which brought her fear, but only the dawning of some unknown realization as she speaks to you now. Who am I? You stand up yelling at the woman for answers. She slaps you in the face and you stiffen and falter back a step. A drop of blood slips down your cheek and you catch it in your cough. 
The witch grabs the handkerchief and throws it off, revealing the obsidian blade beneath. It is sharper than you remember, a vivid sliver of yourself running down the edge as though you cracked a door toward a mirror. The Hexen sits back down and pushes the weapon across the table. No more questions, Selzord. There's only so much I know, and so much you need to know. We've made a deal, and this is the end of it. <clears throat> Taking the dagger, you ask what she did to it, but she refuses to answer. You then ask if there are more out there like her. She grins playfully. I pray there are not. You gain an obsidian dagger. Okay, so now we could leave, or we could kill her, I guess. Or we could attempt to kill her. I'm just gonna leave her alive. I mean, she helped us out. We're not, like hellbound on killing every single witch, especially if they're ostensibly not that evil. We are done here then, and I shall take my leave. You bid the witch adieu, and she says nothing more. Outside, the man asks what she said, while others making reference to sexual escapades. You think you're smirking, but you really don't know. The conversation has left you in a fog, and from within the mist, you only depend upon what you know, ordering the company back on the road. Time to go. Okay, let's see if we actually got the dagger or not. Inventory is completely full, so I suspect it's been dropped. Oh, we did get it. Obsidian dagger. Resurrects any human killed with it as a Wiener Ganger fighting for you. Does okay damage, I guess. But we won't be using that. No one's a dagger user, and having Wiener Ganger allies not that impactful at this stage of the game. Anywho, so Malobot perished. That's not the end of the world. Sami gained a level. Let's level him up. Guess we'll take initiative now. There we go. So that was a long one. A very difficult, long fight. In the end, it went relatively well. Like I've been saying, I got Malabot killed uh, due to my own fault, but... Oh well, such is life in Battle Brothers. Life leads to death, and this time it was Malabot's turn to perish. So with that, let's take a look at the obituary. 33, 34 men have fallen since you took command, Malabot's being the last of them. So yeah, we have reached um, one of our end goals here. The ultimate goal left is the Kraken. Kraken is located... Uh, where is it? Well, somewhere around here. Here. So that's well where we will head up relatively soon. Not sure if we'll go there just yet. There's a chance the fight will crash the game, in which case we can't do it. If it doesn't crash the game, there's a good chance that people die. Maybe even the whole team that I bring, but we shall see. Anywho, the Witch Hut is now done, the Ichirok is done. Basically half of the Legendary Beast contracts have been... Well, dealt with or done at least once. So we shall see if we can unlock the skin ghoul contract, for example, at some point. It's going to take a lot of grinding, so I don't know. But yeah, it's been two hours and my throat is giving out. Thanks mostly due to that witch flavor text there. Thank you for watching and I shall see you next time for something. 
We have two roster spots open, so we might go for, for some recruits now. Anywho, that's that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.